In this video we're going to be looking at dilations for sine and cos graphs. So we've already looked at the general shape of both sine and cos and we've seen they are, are fairly similar. And now we're going to look at how dilations affect them, uh, affect the equation as well as how we can graph them. So with the dilations, with these trigonometric functions, it's really important to keep in mind are you talking about from the x-axis or from the y-axis? And these make a big difference depending on which one you're talking about. So if you're talking about the x-axis and you're replacing y with y on k, then if you're going from the y-axis, you're applying x with x on k. And the reason why these create different uh, effects on the graph, quite different, is that if you have y equals sine x and you replace y, the k is going to be on the outside of the graph. So you have like y on k is equal to sine x, and then the k will come across. But the k is on the outside of the trigonometric function. However, if we're now looking at from the y-axis, and we have x with x on k, we're going to get y is equal to sine x on k. So the k is now inside the trigonometric function, which is going to affect the graph in a different way from when it's on the outside. So beginning, we'll look at dilations away from the x-axis, and we'll look at the graph fx is equal to sine x. See so here we have the standard sine x graph, and you just remember continues, yeah, so we know that that point there is going to be 0, 0. Another point here, which is uh, 2 pi 0. And there is pi 0. So we know that the period is equal to 2 pi. Now, if we're going from the x-axis, that means we're replacing y with y on k. So once we replace y with y on k, we're going to get y on k is equal to sine x. Therefore, y is equal to k times sine x. So what does this do? Well, let's say k is equal to 3. So we're going to get the graph y is equal to 3 sine x. Well, obviously, 0, 0 is going to remain the same. And then pi 0 is going to remain the same, 2 pi 0, because when you sub in pi, 2 pi, 0 pi, you're going to get 3 times 0, and that's always going to give you 0. So no matter what is, no matter what k is, it's not going to affect the x-intercepts. So I know that it intercepts here, intercepts here, intercepts here, and so on, and on the way on the other side as well. So I know the x-intercepts remain the same. So what about this point here? Well, previously this point was pi on 2, 1, and this was a maximum. So it's still going to be a maximum with this graph. So if we sub sine pi on 2, and the reason why it's a maximum is that when you have sine pi on 2, that is a maximum. So we have sine pi on 2, which gives us 1. So we sub that in, and we find that y is equal to 3 times 1, which is just equal to 3. Because sine pi on 2 is 1, 3 times 1 is equal to 3. So now we have a point up here, which is equal to pi on 2, 3. Now, at every other maximum, we're going to hit 3. So, along here, oh, so that's on the maximum. So, here we're going to have a maximum, here we're also going to have a maximum, that would be negative 3 pi on 2, 3. And then, yeah, because if you go from the unit circle, you can go around negative 3 pi on 2, and you'll reach positive 3 pi on 2. But now what about the negatives? Well when sine um, 3, let's say sine 3 pi on 2 or sine wh whatever the x number is because it's going to be cyclical is equal to negative 1, we're going to get 3 times negative 1 which will equal negative 3. So this means we're now going to get a minimum of negative 3. So that means this point here goes down here point here will be here. And then we can sort of connect the dots because the shape will remain the same. So it's going to look like this. So the shape remains the same, however we have increased the maximums and at every single point it's now going to be greater because of the k value and you just continue this shape but you put down the maximum and the minimums have now changed in magnitude. So this means that the graph's amplitude or magnitude has changed. So before, the amplitude or the magnitude was equal to 1. 
so this was equal to 1 but now the amplitude is equal to 3 so you can see that here 3 so whatever you dilate by whatever k is equal to that will become the new magnitude so what about if k was a fraction so if we have k is equal to let's say a half then this means that when we put it over so if we have y on a half that gives us 2y that means we have 2y is equal to sine x and that means we'll get y is equal to a half sine x so instead of going up to 3 we're now going to go up to a half so that means it's going to look like the same shape but and the x intercepts will remain the same once again but now it's going to be lower than the previous one so once again the magnitude has changed so when you see dilations away from the x-axis you know that the magnitude is going to same stay the same the x-intercepts will the magnitude will change sorry but the x-intercepts will remain the same so you can see that here so the graph's going up and then down and you can think about that because you're from the x so you're either going getting closer to the x or further away so what about dilations away from the y-axis so here we have fx is equal to sine x but we're going to we have a few more rotations but if you remember the graph's going to continue either way so this is when we're replacing x with x on k so let's begin when k is equal to 2 that means we're going to get y is equal to sine x on 2 so what's this going to do well the magnitude is going to remain the same because the k out the front hasn't changed so the sine is still going to be between um, less than 1 or equal to then you're going to have sine x on 2 or less, bigger than negative 1 so the magnitude is going to remain the same so we know that the maximum is going to be 1 and the minimum is going to be negative 1 but what about these points here well 0 0 is still going to be 0 0 but at this point here we have pi on pi 0 so let's sub in pi to this equation well when we sub in pi we get y is equal to sine pi on 2 on 2 uh, yeah pi on 2 and we know the sine pi on 2 is equal to 1 so that's equal to 1 so instead of having pi 0 we now have pi 1 and then this point over here used to be 2 pi 0 so then we sub this in and we get y is equal to sine 2 pi on 2 which is going to give us sine pi which is equal to 0 so that point there is going to remain there then we can connect the dots and we see that it looks like this and it continues going along and this point here is also going to be a maximum and then that's going to be a minimum and you can see it's going to look something like this so what you've done is you have this exact same shape but effectively this x on 2 has meant that it has extended its length by 2. So whatever x value you have, it now has to be double the value to have the same as before. So to get this point here, this was pi on 2, 1. But because of this divided by 2, x now has to be double the value. So instead of pi on 2, we now have pi for the same point. So we can see that here. So what we can think is the x intercepts are go going to change. And you can work that when we've looked we've looked at how to look at um, trigonometric equations and when we can solve that we see that x on 2 is going to times all the x-intercepts by 2 and we have done that here because every x-intercept is times by 2 so using uh, the algebra and you can solve that equation you can see that and then you can also look at the maximums so what we have is we have this double and then on the other side it's going to be the same thing so this will be the intercept this will be the intercept and then this is going to be the minimum and this is going to be the maximum and then we can just draw in another sine graph here and then if we think about this how can we describe this sine graph well we can think about the period so the period before was 2 pi but what is the period now well the period is equal to 4 pi and that's because you need to go from 0 all the way to pi 
down to 2 pi and then along here to 4 pi. So an easy way to think how does dilations away from the y-axis affect the graph? Well it changes the period. You can relate this to the unit circle. So if we have the unit circle here and we've got x on 2 then we're going to get all the way around the unit circle we now need 4 pi because 4 pi on 2 will give us 2 pi so we need to go from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to 4 pi and that goes all the way around the unit circle that means the period is equal to 4 pi. Another formula you can use is that the period is equal to 2 pi divided by um, or times by k or divided by whatever yeah times by k where k is whatever the number is divided by or you can go 2 pi on k where k is equal to a half so it's up to you how you interpret the formula so if you interpret this as 2 as k is equal to 2 then the formula is 2 pi k so the period 2 pi the uh, the standard period 2 pi times whatever the dilation is, so k is equal to 2. But if you want to think about this as a half, then you just need to go 2 pi divided by, let's say, a, where a is equal to a half. If you didn't quite understand that, don't worry too much. Just think about what happens to the period, look at the x-intercepts, think about the period, think about the unit circle, and then you'll be able to work out, well, what is the period now? So what happens if we now replace x with x on k? but k is a fraction. So that means we're going to replace x with, let's say, 2x. So that means we're going to get y is equal to sine 2x. Well, before it elongated the sine graph. So here we had the sine, and then it made it bigger, and the period increased. So you can think about, well, what's going to happen when you have 2x? What's going to be the opposite? So to get around the unit circle, we need x is equal. We can go from x is equal to 0 to x is equal to pi. Because when you times um, pi by 2, we get 2 pi. So effectively we're going from 0 to 2 pi. So we've gone around the unit circle once. So the period is now going to equal pi. And with this graph here, it's going to, when this was becomes a maximum, it's going to become an intercept. We're going to have double the intercepts. And rather than graph being elongated like that, it's now going to become shorter. I'm going to get the sine graph that looks like this. Obviously, yeah, you want to draw in the maximums, they want to be the same height because remember the magnitude never changes when you're dilating from the y axis. However, we're going to get a graph that looks something like this. And you can sub in these values. So if you have x is equal to 0, it's going to be the same. But then what about when x is equal to negative pi? Or well, we're going to get sine negative 2 pi, so it is still going to be the same value, so it is going to be 0. But what about when pi was equal to pi on 2? Well, we're going to get 2 times pi on 2. 2 times 2 is pi, so we're going to get sine pi, which is equal to 0. So that's why at this point we're also going to have 0. Then we can take, let's say, pi on 4, which is a random value along here. But then when we times it by 2, we get pi on 2, so it's going to be a maximum value. But as it's negative pi on 2, it's going to be a, the most negative value. So therefore here, we could have pi on 4 is equal to negative 1. When you solve these equations, you can get a general form for the x-intercepts. You can also get a general form for the, um, the main, where they intercept for the height. But if you also know the period, so you know the period is pi, then that means you can also think about when's this value going to be. Well, it's going to be pi on 4 plus pi. So it's going to be 5 pi on 4, oh, sorry that's negative pi on 4, negative 5 pi on 4, negative 1, and that's an easy way you can work out what the next values are because you just have to add pi onto every value. So you can't do that for the x-intercepts because remember that there's two x-intercepts for every period, however for the most negative values, so the bottom of the graph you can just add the period, and then for the top you can also add the period there as well. So the for the cos graph, as we've already gone through the sine, it's pretty simple, or very like, simple as in it's similar. So we have fx is equal to cos x here, but then if we add a k out the front, so we have k cos x, that's going to mean the x-intercepts will stay the same,
but the magnitude will change, just like when we had for sine, or it could become less, like that. So it's the exact same as we looked for sine. You just need to make sure that the general equation you start with is different. Then with the elongation, so I only look at the right side at the moment. Obviously with cos, you do have both sides as well. So then when we have cos x on k, we can get it elongated. So with this one, it is a bit trickier with regards to working it out because it doesn't start at 0, 0. So it isn't as nice. But we do start at this point here. And then let's say we have the graph cos x on 2. So if you have cos x on 2, then this value here before was uh, pi on 2. Now that's, this becomes cos pi on 2 on 2, which is just equal to cos pi on 4. So it's going to be a random value there. What about this value here? So that value was uh, pi, and then that means that we're going to get cos pi on 2. So this value here is now going to become a x intercept. Then we can look at this value at the top, and that top value was when we had 2 pi. So cos 2 pi on 2 gives us cos pi. And we know that cos pi is negative 1, so it's going to go down here. We can see that the graph is going to look like this. And once again, it's going to intercept. And it's going to go back up once again. So we've gone, that's one period for the cos graph, and we've gone along two. So we can see that it's been elongated, and that for every x value you need to double it to get the exact same point. So from here you've doubled it to, for this value, you've had to double the x value to get the same y value. So here we have cos x on two, and we, just, and we know that similar to the sine, the period is now equal to four pi.